What do you need to do to become a senior developer? Suck up to the boss, find incriminating information and leverage that to get a promotion, threaten to hit your superior with a mechanical keyboard, or is there another way to do this that's not against the law? Turns out there are multiple things you can do, and today I'm going to cover seven of them. Well, okay. Eight. Since this is a video about learning, I thought it'd be a nice opportunity to announce that I'm going to be working with Brilliant. I want to learn more about data science this year, and I thought I'd get started by brushing up some of my basic knowledge of statistics. So, I'm doing a course on probability fundamentals at the moment, and the lessons in Brilliant are hands-on, and they're fun, because they're really interactive. And some of these questions are actually quite challenging. If you want to check it out, there's a link in the description of this video that gives you 20% off an annual subscription to Brilliant. And if you subscribe for a trial via the link, you'll also support the channel. I'll talk more about Brilliant later. Let's get back to the video. Before I talk about things you can do to become a senior developer, let's first look at what the main differences are between developer positions. That sounds like a Kama Sutra thing. Honey, you want to try the developer position tonight? Okay. Generally speaking, we make a distinction between junior, media, mid-level, and senior developers. And then you also have lead developers. Junior developers usually have less than two, three years of development experience. They should know how to code in one or two languages and have some experience with a few frameworks. TensorFlow, Pandas for data science, React, Node.js for web development, depending on the area that the developer is working in. A media, mid-level developer should have three to five years of experience. They should know how to operate in a development team. In terms of tools and languages, you'd expect a bit of a broader set of knowledge in more different domains, like having both backend and frontend experience, some DevOps. Again, it depends on the area that the developer is working in. And then a senior developer has at least five plus years of experience, should know most modern programming languages or at least be able to quickly learn a new language. And they should also have great other skills such as communication, technical project management and software design skills. Overall, a senior development should have a more holistic view of software development and be able to come up with great software designs. A lead developer is like a senior developer, but with a focus on management skills. They should be able to guide development efforts, prove that these efforts are valuable to the business. They should be expert at all aspects of software development, including things like requirements, engineering, software design, testing, Q&A, DevOps, and managing teams. Now those numbers that I mentioned, you know, the experience and years, those are just indications. There are no strict rules. In fact, the number of years of experience doesn't even say that much. The difference lies mostly in that a senior developer will operate from a different mindset than a junior developer. Junior developers tend to focus on just making sure that the code works, whereas senior developers view the software and design more holistically and understand the difference between working software and good software. So how do you make that shift from a junior to a senior developer? How do you grow that different mindset? Oh, by the way, if you're enjoying this video so far, give it a like, it helps to support the channel. So here are a few tips for junior developers to grow a senior developer mindset. The first one is to write well-designed code. Whenever you write code, try to keep things simple. Good software will look like it's really simple and straightforward. Don't try to show off. Hey, did you know you could use this Dunder method to change how inheritance works? Cool. No, you actually don't need many of the advanced features of a programming language. Keep things simple and basic. Optimize your code for readability and for being able to easily change it. Robert Martin calls this clean code. Now, what does it mean? Well, follow design principles. So minimize coupling between areas of the code, maximize cohesion. So each piece of code is responsible for one thing only. Another thing is to make sure your code is easy to test by introducing abstractions where needed separate creating resources from using them so you can inject them as a dependency. I did a video a while ago about injecting dependencies. I'll put a link at the top. Also make sure to add comments to your code so it's easy to follow by others and yourself in a couple of months. As Martin Fowler says, any fool can write code that a computer can understand. Good programmers write code that humans can understand. The second tip is to always maintain a learning mindset. One of the biggest mistakes I see developers make is that they think 
They need to know everything before they get started. Unfortunately, you're never going to know everything. In software development, learning actually never stops. And it involves way more than just writing code. I mean, you need to know the technologies that you use, libraries, data structures that are best for different problems, which design principles, patterns help you write clean code, how to test your code, how to deploy your code, how to work with a team of other developers, clients, other stakeholders, and that's just the start. I mean, technology is always changing, so there's always going to be more things to learn. If you want to become the best software developer out there, embrace learning. Don't be afraid of change. And the longer you do this, the bigger the impact is going to be. The third tip is to document what you learn. Simply following online courses, watching videos, reading books and blogs, you know, that's not enough. It's crucial that you also internalize that information and give yourself the time to think things over. Take notes of the things you learn and write down your thoughts about a particular subject while you're learning about it. You know, it's great to have a track record because you're going to forget things that might come in handy later on. Also, if you write things down as you learn them, that's going to allow you to see the progress you made by looking back at your older notes from time to time. There are lots of great tools out there to help you with this. You can use something simple like Notepad or Apple Notes, or you can use Markdown files to gather your thoughts. VS Code can format those files for you automatically, or you can go all in with a tool like Notion. It's also useful to maintain a private Git repository where you can experiment with things and keep track of your coding history. In general, you want to take your decisions using data and logic, and writing things down definitely helps there. For example, if you need to figure out which cloud provider to choose for your application, write down the pros and cons of each. Determine what criteria are important for you in terms of features, cost, how easy it is to implement in your context, and don't just say, tool A is better than tool B because the website looks nicer or something. Understand why one is better than the other. Tip number four is to look at the bigger picture. Junior developers tend to have a smaller zone of focus when they're working within a system, whereas more senior developers have a bird's eye view. And more experienced developers will take time to think through the potential side effects of what they're doing, as well as how this fits in the overall system. You can practice this by asking yourself regularly some questions like, is what I'm doing consistent with how things have done before in the code base? Is this code going to be reused elsewhere in the system? And will my code be easy to maintain or extend in the future? When you write software, it's quite natural to view things as a software developer. Try to view the software from the user's perspective instead. How does that new feature you added affect the flow that the user goes through? Do the steps make sense? Are there things you can do to make things easier for the user? And I've noticed that spending a bit of extra time there by looking at the bigger picture and pretending you're a user and viewing the software in that way helps avoid a lot of bugs and problems in the long run. I've written a free guide to help you design software, and they're going to more detail of what this bigger picture entails. You can get it at ariancodes.com slash design guide. It's really straightforward, contains practical advice that hopefully helps you. And I've also put a link to this guide in the description of this video. Tip number five is to take responsibility for your work. I've noticed junior developers tend to focus on implementing the feature that's requested from them and not think enough about various testing scenarios and edge cases. They assume that any bugs are going to be found by software testers or code reviewers. But it works much better if you do rigorous testing yourself before submitting your code for a review. This saves time for the rest of the team and you won't have to pass the code multiple times through development and review. It's important to feel responsible for the quality of your work and make sure you hit that quality level by thinking yourself about the different edge cases, how the feature is going to be used, and whether other parts of the software are going to be affected by it. Tip number six is to understand the context of what you're working on. One of the things I noticed when running a startup is that it's really tempting to only focus on the product and only look at what next feature to add, how to make the software even better. But it's actually way more important to understand why you're building something. If you don't understand what your customer actually needs, you're probably building stuff that the customer doesn't want. So don't make too many assumptions about your customer and Take the time to learn about how things work in the real world. Try to understand the real problem people have before thinking about the solution. Tip number seven is to have open discussions about your design. 
One of the best ways to improve the way you design software is by talking about it with your peers. If you work in a team of developers, you can ask your team members to review your code. And when they do, make sure you're not only getting line-by-line -line feedback, but also feedback on the overall structure of your design, as this is going to help you improve your design skills. Also, really important, try to do code reviews yourself of code by others. And this helps you broaden your horizons, as well as think about why certain designs work better than others. And being able to articulate this clearly in a code review is an extremely valuable skill to have. What has helped me become better at design is to have open discussions about my decisions with others. And it's important to always keep an open mind. You know, don't get too attached to a specific solution or approach and to create an environment where everybody's free to discuss any idea and don't worry too much about the quality. It happened quite a few times to me in those discussions that I proposed an idea, it was a really bad idea, but then later on it triggered a great idea by somebody else. So that's why you should never put a filter on ideas in the beginning. One other really fun thing that I like to do sometimes is to explicitly take the other side and explore what happens in a discussion. Just take the opposite stance of what you really think. Or what I also like to do sometimes is question a very basic assumption and see where it leads. The outcome can be quite interesting. My final tip is to have some side projects. Side projects are great for learning new languages or platforms. Don't make these projects too large. It's also important that you're able to complete them so they're not too daunting and at the same time give you a nice result. You often learn way more from a side project than from actual coding at your job because you'll be responsible for every aspect of your project and you'll have more freedom to explore. It happened to me several times that a side project led to major changes in my company. For example, us moving to a fully React-based stack was because of one of my side projects. And actually this whole YouTube channel started as a side project. Well, it still kinda is. Let me know in the comments what has helped you the most in your learning process as a developer. In the end, all these things lead to a certain learning mindset, always being open to learn new things, learning from others, becoming a good listener, welcoming feedback on your work. That learning mindset is going to be one of the most valuable skills you can have. It's going to allow you to grow personally, and that in turn will lead to more compounding growth. A great way to explore your capabilities, kickstart your learning is by following courses in Brilliant. I think what Brilliant does really well is that it provides a beautiful interface that encourages you to go through the material. Like here, for example, I'm doing a probability lesson. As you can see, the interface is very visual and it guides you step by step through the process. Each lesson is also interactive. In this case, the challenge is to determine what the probability is that shipments arrive on time. And you have this grid interactive element built in that you can play around with. And then there's the question you answer and you view an explanation as well to gain more insight into the background of the material. So overall, I really like the courses in Brilliant and I'm excited to complete this probability course so I can dive into the other courses that are part of their data science program. Join the millions of people already learning on Brilliant. Head to the link in the description of this video to get started for free with Brilliant's interactive lessons. And the first 200 viewers will also get 20% off an annual membership. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like and consider subscribing to my channel if you want to learn more about software design and development. Thanks for watching, take care, and see you soon.